It's that time again. The annual conference of the American Society of Ag Consultants, otherwise known as ASAC, is going to be held in Fort Myers, Florida, this November 4th and 5th. Kirk Covington is one of nine professionals who will address the conference. The other speakers who will cover a wide range of topics represent Florida Farm Bureau, Florida Citrus Commission, University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture, National Ag Law Center, Risk Mitigators and Advisors, Tyler Associates, as well as the lead economist for dairy at Cobank, and myself, Chrissy Wozniak, from North American Ag. The day and a half of presentations will be followed by ag tours on Tuesday afternoon at Echo Farms, one of my favorite places here in Fort Myers. Attendees will experience farming at its most creative, with unique demonstrations, plants, and techniques being used to help farmers and urban gardeners in developing countries. A second tour at ECHO will showcase simple technologies that can improve food, water, and shelter for millions of people. A third tour of a hydroponic grower is also being planned. For more information and to register, visit www.agconsultants.org. That's www.agconsultants.org. See you there. Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today is a native of Venezuela who originally came to the United States to further his education. He attended Oklahoma State University and received a Bachelor of uh, Science degrees in animal science and in agronomy. And today he owns and operates TCTS Global LLC, a consulting company that assists businesses to bridge the gap with the Latino workforce in the agriculture and food related industries to meet their needs for professional and skilled labor. He has delivered international talks, workshops, and webinars in Mexico, Nicaragua, Brazil, Venezuela, Canada, and the U.S. From Harlan, Iowa, I would like to welcome Orlando Gill. Welcome, Orlando, and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Chrissy. It's it's an honor and uh, just such a great opportunity to share, hopefully, some things that will help your audiences, somebody that might be thinking of solutions that may trigger some ideas. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, and so first of all, tell me a bit about your own background. It's very interesting. You've done a lot of things and you've done a lot of traveling. Yes. And I was very, very fortunate, uh, even though I didn't start in the, with the right foot. I wasn't doing very well at school, and my my father actually just kind of pulled me by the ear and said, I'm going to give you a choice of two, take it or leave it, and he sent me to the United States. He had been educated here in the U.S., so he provided me with the opportunity to come to the U.S. I was very young at that time, and... I've been in this country for 43 years. I tell people that I came when I was three, and then they get the calculator out and, and add the 43 and the three, and they go, no, no, wait a minute, that doesn't that doesn't add up. I've been here for a long time, and I was very lucky, very fortunate, because I came in on a plane, I came in with a passport, and I came in with a little bit of money with me, which is not the same situation that many of our immigrant population um, today right. um, faces, you know. Absolutely. So I, I came here to, to go to school. I was very, um, very lucky to be given that opportunity and then just I never came thinking that I would stay in the United States. It just happened. It, it, it Time goes by, life happens, and then I'm still here. I've been here 43 years. My uh, two children, our two children, uh, Garrett and Tanner, live in Oklahoma. They're Americans. They're in their 30s now and i had the opportunity to do different things but today our mission and this is this is important 
to me, it's important to us, it's important to our company, is that our mission is to develop talent. And we do that by the positive impact that we have on each individual that we speak to or engage with as we interact with them. And we talk about we get up every morning thinking of our mission. And that's really what we do. We're developing talent. And hopefully there is a change in the paradigm that when we think of agriculture, we don't think of the individuals that we work with as labor, but rather think of them as talent. So that's where we come in. That's, I believe, the biggest opportunity that exists in especially agricultural operations these days. Yeah, that's amazing. So tell me about TCTS Global, why you started the company and and really what you do. Well, we started back in 2001 just doing translation work. And I would, for the companies that I worked for, I would at, be asked to to do some translation work, some interpretation work. And I did that for several years. In 2008, we started a program where we brought professionals from Mexico on TM visas. And we have been at it since, since that time. Today, uh, we have grown exponentially. Uh, I worked with this lady, our partner, my wife and I decided to to ask her if she would give us the opportunity to work with us. And she's in Argentina. She's our CEO. And it's been almost four years. Our growth has been exponential. Today, we have operations in Argentina, Brazil, Nicaragua, Mexico, uh, the U.S., and Pretty soon uh, we'll be expanding into Canada. So you're Canadian, aren't you? I am. Yes, <laughs> yes. And also, also immigrated to the U.S. <laughs> oh well, there you go. There you go. There you go. So um, that's that's what we do, yeah. and we do from translation work, which we really do very little of that type of work. Uh, we do leadership development programs, seminars, workshops. And then we have a main um, program where we are bringing these professionals from Mexico with four objectives. One is to learn to come legally, to learn Mm -hmm. the American production system, to live and experience the American culture, to improve their language abilities to the point that they are bilingual. My partner says no. It, they're fluent. Right. It, it takes a lifetime, and I'm still learning English, right? Mm-hmm. And then the most important one is once they have completed the program to go back to their country of origin to add value to the industry wow. and profession. And that model itself has provided us the opportunity for us to offer similar programs from the standpoint of the four objectives, but we're doing it through trips. So we're bringing folks from South America to the United States. And here in June, we're going to have a cultural pork experience, USA. We're bringing folks from Argentina, Brazil, Mexico to the World Pork Expo. Mm-hmm. With the four objectives: learn the American production system, the culture, the language, a little bit of the language, so that they go back with a broader vision mm-hmm. and understanding of our production system and of our country. We're going to Brazil in November. There is a big show in Brazil, the Pork Expo Brazil, which is amazing. Yeah, that and sounds really interesting. 
in our in Argentina, we are going to have a CBDE, which means cultural beef and dairy experience in November. Same model, same objectives, but we're going to be taking individuals from the dairy and beef industry. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's been it's been amazing because when you think of of the cultural divide that mm-hmm. we're experiencing today, it, it it's it's just very satisfying and uplifting that we're able to just do a little bit to to get people together and to get people to understand each other and to look at people with as talented people and not as a commodity right. if we think of them as as labor so yeah. that's 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 who we are and, and it's just it's just so exciting to to see the the growth and the development of our uh, collaborators that we that work with us uh, to see the growth and the development of our participants, of mm-hmm. these individuals that come here. And basically, my wife and I feel so blessed that, in a way, we've changed lives. And today, uh, it, it's just their kids are, you know, they're our friends, they're our, our family. So it's it's just very very uplifting and, and and very satisfying to do the work that we do. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And before you came to Iowa, you were training production manager for Seaboard Foods, and that's one of the country's top ten pork producers and processors. So I'm sure because you had you know feet on the ground, you were really working within several not just food but also production. Uh, sure. What kind of labor issues did you see there, and is that where this kind of started? It it started around that time. Mm-hmm. Back then, I was I was uh, I did several. I had several opportunities within Seaboard Foods, great company, just a growing company, and I actually ended up working at a farm. And the farm that I worked at, there were fifty employees. And there was, I think, one or two Anglos because the rest of us were Latinos. Mm-hmm. I was the, the farm manager, so I had to, and it was fairly easy for me because they were all Latinos. We spoke the, the same language, even though that doesn't really help that much because it's about people, right, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, no matter what language. Uh, you're speaking, but a 13,000 sow farm, and we had issues with the cultural divide. We had issues with trying to, our folks, trying to fit in the American culture. And then when you looked at the system as a whole, that was a challenge for some of the managers, that you had managers that did not know much about the culture, did not know much about the language. And then you had that divide there where it just offered many, many opportunities. Right. Yeah. Wow. And do you work only with the swine industry or are there other industries that you're, that you have focus on? Well, we have in the past, we have worked with the dairy industry. We -hmm. have worked with them, but uh, primarily with the swine industry, we are in the process of expanding into poultry and expanding into processing plants okay. with the food industry. And we've done a little bit here, a little bit there, but now we we're actually focusing on on growing that business, that part of the business. Oh, and it's great. just amazing the the opportunities. And mm-hmm. and we tell people we're not an employment agency. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're not an employment agency. We're not coyotes. Everything mm-hmm. we do is legal. Right. Yeah. And and then we're not human traffickers. Mm-hmm. And and I hate to say it, but 
sometimes we have taken advantage of individuals that may not understand us mm -hmm. the way they could. And so there is yeah. there is opportunity there from, from both sides, of mm -hmm. course. And that's we're just bridging that gap. Right. Yeah. And, that totally and helping makes sense. folks understand each other better. Yeah. And and migrant workers, they're they're seen by producers over the US and Canada not only as an integral integral to the success of their farms, but also as an extension of their own families in many cases. So what tools do these producers need to ensure success for the farm and for the worker? I would say that they would start with empathy mm -hmm. and really trying to understand the, the other individual, be it somebody that they see at the grocery store or they meet at church or they run into on the street. Even when they're working, that they actually have the opportunity to, to better understand these individuals. That's where having empathy present, then that will let them understand who they're working with mm -hmm. and help them get better results. People don't do anything because they have to do it. People will do things because they want to do it. Yeah. And many, many times they may do something because they're getting a paycheck. They may do something because the boss says that they need to do something. But at the end of the day, we cannot motivate people. People motivate themselves. That's a good point. So understanding and having that empathy present, having that understanding and in a way putting yourself in the other folks shoes i think it would help uh, just enormously you know one thing that i have thought and somebody that would would uh, take me on the idea i would like for them to cross the border south mm -hmm. and then do the same thing that some of these people are are coming up right. would you imagine what Many times we we feel that people that are coming up are here to take advantage of us. There's some, sure. There's always bad people. But can you imagine leaving your family, leaving your country, leaving what you know to come to another country? It must be pretty tough and pretty hard for you to make the decision to cross the border. And I'm just referring to folks that just don't have the ability to come here legally. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it's the same thing. You're going into unknown waters. Right. You're going into something that is completely foreign to us. To, to you. Yeah. So how do you how do you deal with that? How do you you get lonely? You get really lonely because it's it, it's it's just it's just present today. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can see, you know, just a just the tip of that in my own journey um from Canada to here to Florida, you know, missing my family and but here it's the same language, right? So I, I do think about the people that, that I come across here that have migrated from the South and they they have to learn a new language. They have to learn a new, entirely new system. At least the US and Canada are very similar, um, similar values, similar ways of life. So yeah, so I can think, you know, we definitely need to start it with, with empathy, right? <laughs> Even, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, you know, through my own journey as well, I've seen, you know, the kind of the the inner bowels of the immigration system with its pluses and its minuses. And 
Sure. And it's scary even doing it legally. It's still scary. It's still, you know, a big, <laughs> a, a huge thing. But what changes to the immigration and work visa system would you make if, you know, you were king for a day and you could, you, it was up to you and, and why would you make those changes? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an easier question? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that's yeah. that's uh that's a it's that's a big a question. very <laughs> interesting question because there's so many things that could be done mm -hmm. and when you have such a large organization that is really the the federal government and the policies and how do we keep our borders safe and mm -hmm. how do we control immigration is it's just uh daunting how how one individual myself fix mm -hmm. it all even if they were if i were king for a day right <laughs> yeah but, but i think little by little it would it would certainly help uh, one comment that I would have would be if you can let your right hand know what the left hand is doing, mm -hmm. that would be a huge, huge, huge help to yeah. get to get things started. We uh, as we worked with uh, with the visa process and in some of the types of visas that we work with, many times they go through different stages. Mm -hmm. And they're provided a visa at the embassy, <clears throat> and it may be a three-year, four-year visa. And then when they get here, they'll look at you up and down because that's a final decision at the port of entry. And they may give you a year or two years mm -hmm. or something like that. There is some inconsistencies there. Uh, Right now, there is a challenge with the three-year and four-year visas. Individuals are paying for a four-year visa at the embassy or consulate. And when they come here, they're not given a four-year visa. They're given a three-year visa. Mm -hmm. And and so that's that's what I am talking about when the right hand and the left hand right. just kind of yeah. knowing uh, and being consistent in, yeah, absolutely. in some of those things. And I think that everyone is is trying to do the best job they can with what they have. And it isn't an organization. It isn't one individual. It's, it's just the system. Right. How do we fix it? How do we make it better is 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 what we need to to work on and i think all of us can help with that by providing feedback and and by being really understanding that it's just a huge undertaking so right. yeah um, and that's a good point that you made about it's not one person you know it's never it's not one person's decision and unfortunately sometimes it does for the immigrant come down to one person standing there and there are so many inconsistencies, so many contradictions, so many, um, but we understand it can't be a free for all. Right? And that's really important to state. It cannot be a free for all. There has to be these rules, but I totally agree. If there was yeah. a little more consistency and fewer contradictions, it would definitely help the process. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a huge challenge. It's a yeah. huge challenge. And I can imagine what, what was going on by back in the late, 1800s, right? Oh, right. Yeah. They, they basically went through the same thing. And I can imagine a uh, an officer at uh, Ellis Island trying to determine, you know, you come in, you don't, and, and those kind of things. And But that's that's where we are today. That's where we are today. Right. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And so I've, in the experience of being able to talk to a lot of farmers across both countries over the years, I've I've heard a, a lot of great heartwarming stories about working with migrant workers and and some creative ways that they've seen. I've seen farm families help migrant workers overcome things like language barrier, transportation, family, or even spiritual needs. What have you seen? Uh, 
I run into the challenge of some folks not looking at immigrant labor as a commodity yeah. and not as talent. Mm-hmm. And, and what that does is it doesn't, in my opinion, humble opinion, that I think what that does is that it doesn't allow for that relationship to grow. Yeah. Now you have huge companies that there's so many layers that perhaps the employee and the only the only relationship they form is with that manager directly mm-hmm. at, at that level. In that manager, there may be several layers upstream that it doesn't help him make an individual decision. Yeah. And and so perhaps sometimes we may have somebody at, at the top making some decisions that are really impacting that employee there. And and I think of it as as a a pyramid, right? Mm-hmm. The pyramid that, that we have normally that we have in companies is that the, the CEO, the president, the owner is all the way to the top, right? And then you come down until you get the bottom, the base of the pyramid and that's where the employees are and you see it in customer service that you go that's who you deal with Mm -hmm. that frontline employee and it should be the other way around it should be like you know our people are the base should be at the top and then come down so because we're supporting that base and if we look at it that way, I think that we're going to have better, better results. And yeah. every case is, is, is different. Of course, every, every case has got its challenges and, uh, but I've seen some, some ugly things mm-hmm. and I've seen some great things. Yeah. And, and it comes down to, to that people just communicating in understanding and respecting each other and understanding that we're here on the same boat and all of us have a different or, but but all of us are just trying to, to get ahead, trying to go in, in some direction, in some direction. That's one of the, um, just to change a little bit of, of the, of the conversation where we're going Mm-hmm. that's one of the things that we do through our programs right. is that the first thing that we start talking to our participants are how to set goals. What is it you want to accomplish? What is it that you want to do with your life? Mm-hmm. And then financial stability. That is something that many times we just we're, we haven't been exposed to. And they come here. And they start making money. And how do you, what do you do with that money? Mm -hmm. I have wasted so much money because of my lack of understanding, right? Until, well, today I have a little budget that I follow. But those are the kind of things that sometimes don't happen. Clear, specific goals. It's something that is, is just huge. We, we work with universities down in Mexico mm-hmm. and we provide some of these leadership development uh, workshops and seminars. And one of the things when we talk about goal setting, we, we show some of the answers that we have gotten over the years on, okay, what are your goals? And we would list one of them that comes to mind is, uh, so what's your goal? I want to work and be happy. Yeah. What does that mean? Right. <laughs> you want to that. work and, <laughs> yeah. and be happy? That doesn't mean anything. So that is one of the things that uh, when we when we think of developing talent, mm-hmm. when we think of operations, 
when you think of, and that's why I love the swine business because most of the time you have a weekly uh, target that that you need to to reach. So you get that feedback constantly. You're getting that feedback. How many how many dead? How many um, breeds? How many farrowings, etc. Mm-hmm. Where if we took the approach of, well, let's see what happens. It goes back to goals and objectives specific that, that you want to accomplish. So, yeah. yeah and, and those are great points. And and then along the lines of your programs, you offer LAD language acquisition program. So what's the target audience of that? And how does the program add value to agricultural and livestock operations? The uh, the language acquisition development program, the mm-hmm. LAD, it's actually geared towards those individuals working in agricultural operations that don't have the language abilities to communicate. Okay. And mm-hmm. by getting in the training and development through the LAD, it allows them to start speak in the language and we have a virtual campus that is just fabulous from the standpoint of being able to take you through levels we do a an initial evaluation test that will put you in a level and then we assign a language advisor to you so that any questions and you meet weekly with this individual. So we are in a way taking you by the hand. You can go on YouTube and and learn just about any language or learn just about anything these days. That's true. Our program, our program is specific to agriculture. And it's something that I don't believe it's out there. Mm -hmm. And and the level of care and the level of specificity for the industry and with the individual, that's what makes us different. Mm-hmm. We have a program that is the Khalil program. It's a cultural awareness, language improvement, and leadership development program. Okay. And that is basically a mirror image of our professional enhancement program where we are bringing professionals from Mexico primarily. And it's geared in the audience is those individuals that are here that companies have brought them up and they have folks that they know are talented. They want to, to promote, they want to develop and the Khalil's program then as, addresses the cultural awareness, the language, and the leadership development. And it's a structured program. And it's a two-year program where somebody that you work with that has that potential, we we get them to be. And, you know, and that is something that we make sure we tell people whenever they take our programs is, you know, we're not telling you what to do. We're mm-hmm. sharing with you. We're inspiring you to do whatever you think you need to do in order mm-hmm. to transform yourself. We promise a transformation that just because you're doing our program, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. You're going to get it when you decide that mm-hmm. you want that transformation. And we're just facilitating and we're helping and we're inspiring people to have that transformation. You go back to the same thing. Nobody does anything they don't want to do. Yeah. It's all it's all up to you. So yeah, for sure. And so those are two of the programs that you offer. What are what are some other services or products that that uh, you have available? Well, we have these these uh, these trips mm-hmm. and the cultural experiences, agricultural experiences. Uh, just recently, we we took a group of of university students to Mexico on a cage um, 
that was the name, a cage. It's a cultural ag experience, a cage I love that. program. <laughs> <laughs> and these and these were students, uh, 12 of them, that we took them down to Mexico. Uh, the professor, Dr. Drew Luger from the University of the, um, I shouldn't say the University of Illinois because he's going to hate me. Illinois State University, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was a big rivalry here, <laughs> as you as you know already. The we took these students uh, as a result of him being in a cultural pork experience we did back in February, and same four objectives: learn about the Mexican production industry learned about the culture, experienced it, learned a little bit about the language, and then come back with a broader vision, a, a, a broader picture of of what it is to produce right. and be in agriculture in other countries. We're going to be doing that to, um, in Brazil when we're taking them to the to the expo. We're going to be doing that in Argentina, uh, we are working on a project where we might have a training farm down in one of these countries. We're we're actually looking at Nicaragua right now, wow. where we might uh, we're talking about setting up this facility. It's already a working facility, and we would bring these individuals that would learn the production system, the culture, the language, and it would be sort of an immersion program. Our dream is to bring kids and experience these opportunities. I was in Texas just a few weeks ago with the Texas FFA Foundation. And they're so, it, they're doing so many things that are teaching these young people to be leaders mm -hmm. that we're hoping that there will be opportunities to, to add the diversity and the international type of travel that would just make them a, a better professional. Yeah. It'll, it'll give us, it's a huge world these days. And, and um, well, sometimes we get messages at 3 o'clock in the morning or, at, you know, at 7 o'clock. And, and, well, if you're not taking off your notifications, that's your fault. But we have such a global mm -hmm. economy now that we have people that we work with. And in, in my case, Argentina, there is a three hour difference. Spain, there is a, a seven hour difference. So right. it, it's, it's, um, providing the opportunity for someone to develop that international awareness and understand the fact that agriculture luckily still happens all over the world, that it's, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to, to have Absolutely. those. Yeah. Right. And it's, it is so important for especially our youth to get out of their bubble of just their community, right. And see what's happening all across the world. That's, that's really incredible. I, I want to go on these trips. This sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're invited. You're invited. I, I know you have a, a, a dairy background and I love for you to, to go see and experience the agricultural aspects of Argentina, besides, of course, eating lots of meat and enjoying the uh, gastronomy, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. down down there. <laughs> and, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So I have one last question for you. You know, reading through your biography, um, through your bio that you sent, and you know, you are um, a spiritual person as well. So. What did God put you on this earth to accomplish? Why do you serve the ag industry in that way? And what's your greatest passion in it all? 
thank you for for asking. And and faith has certainly been a, a big part of my life. Not always. I was a little wild at some point. I think we all were. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's um, I've come to realize that each one of us, each one of us has the responsibility to share their talents. Mm -hmm. And all of us has, have been given so much that we're responsible to share those with the world. And we're basically, we are tasked with taking that light and share it with someone. And I'm, I'm not talking about grabbing a Bible and hitting somebody over the head with it. it it's, it's really from what we do on a daily basis that, that, that we have an impact. So I Working feel ourselves, right. Rather than just yes, making a speech. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we show really with our actions, what we are all about and we can, blah, 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 all we want, that at the end of the day, our actions really determine who we are mm -hmm. and what we think about and what we feel you know, we're put in the, on this earth to to do. So I'm, I'm blessed beyond belief, blessed. I'm blessed to be here with you, to be able to, to, to share these ideas. So I thank you. Yeah, and thank you. So where can people go to learn more? I'm on social media. There's several ways of getting a hold of, of me, Orlando Gill. Uh, LinkedIn, it's it's a good way mm -hmm. that they can they can follow me, they can contact me. I love to to connect. Uh, also our company is on LinkedIn, PCTS Global at LinkedIn. Uh, we have several, th in fact, right now we're doing a productivity course in Spanish that has got to do with how to be more productive. And we're doing it in Spanish. We're doing a pilot program and we're getting ready to do one in English, a pilot program. So if anyone is interested in being a part of this pilot program, it's, it's called the productivity course, the GIST methodology, G Y S T. And I, I stole a little bit of the ideas from David Allen, the guru, right? From the GTD, the getting things done methodology. Mm -hmm. But ours is the GIST methodology. Get your S together to be I more love productive. That. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's available if if you're interested in in being a part of that we'd love to hear from you we're going to to uh, launch those courses out here very soon so amazing well thank you so much orlando for your time today this was a great conversation i love learning more about you and what you're doing it's incredible well likewise thank you i i appreciate it chrissy it's been a great time and thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, all the links are provided in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe to North American Ag on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, or Eggfuse. And the podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, wherever you listen to podcasts. And we love when you like, share, and subscribe. Um, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Our newest podcast by North American Ag is called What Color Is Your Tractor? The stories behind the ag brands you love and the ag brands you love to hate. Hosted by me, Chrissy Wozniak. We take a deep dive into the companies that have built modern agriculture. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Go to whatcolorisyourtractor.com. Available on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts.